So I have two RX 5600 XTs, one from Powercolor and one from Sapphire. So I thought why not do a quick review. So here's the Powercolor card first and we'll take a look at the packaging. And here you can see it's covered in this anti-static plastic wrap as well as this really nice dense foam around the box to help protect the card during shipping, which is already superior to the Sapphire card in my opinion. And yeah, well, the card itself is here, but first let's take a look at the Sapphire card's packaging, which again comes in a brown box, but then, oh no, there's no real padding whatsoever inside it. There's just the guides and this bubble wrap anti-static plastic wrap that Sapphire puts their card in. There isn't really any real protection, so they're already below power color in the packaging department, in my opinion. But here, while we're here, let's take a look at the Sapphire card first which you might have already seen in my unboxing video as well. While I'm peeling the plastic, you can see that this card's design is pretty simple. It's a pretty stealthily designed card. I think that the all black aesthetic really works and it's really a non-gamery design card if you get what I mean. You know, there isn't any red accents like the Pulse non-black edition because the black edition is the simplified version of the Sapphire RX 5600 XT and as you can see, this shroud is all black with just the fan hubs having the Pulse logo, which has a bit of red. And the heatsink itself is slightly smaller than the non-black edition, but it's still a pretty well-designed heatsink, which extends all the way through the card and still has four heat pipes to cool the GPU. So it should work pretty well still. And it also has a cutout on the backplate to allow the hot air to exhaust through the backplate straight through, kind of like how the NVIDIA Founders Edition cards are these days. Well, this card also has a uh, horizontal design fins, so the air kind of goes all around the cards and mostly from the front and back as well. And you can see that it's a pretty open shroud design with the backplate as well where the iOS being open and Sapphire using two display ports as well as two HDMI for the display outs, which is a bit different than what Parkolor is doing. And again, the exhaust fan is actually useful in this case because the heatsink fins are horizontally oriented so it does blow air through the front, front and the back of the card as well as on the sides. And this card being an RX 5600 XT it also has PCIe 4.0 connection just as all RX 5600 XTs as well as a single 8 pin for power input which should provide up to 225 watts in theory for the GPU. So that should be quite enough especially because this is a pretty locked out card. Now for the backplate design, I think that Sapphire wins hands down with the backplate because it looks really nice with all the black coloring as well as some of the color accents which are really subtle like the gray and the glossy and matte black color difference. So I think it does look really nice and clean as well as not too distracting with too much game real uh, designs with you know lots of red or rgb everywhere in fact this card doesn't have a single strip of led rgb anywhere so this is a pretty simple card design and the fans themselves are pretty large i think they're about 92 millimeters and they do cover the whole length of the heatsink so it does seem like they're positioning it really effectively for it to cool the heatsink and i do think that this is still a good looking card and well it seems really well engineered as well from the heatsink point because it does contact everything on the PCB, such as the VRM as well as the VRAM. So all the memory modules and the VRM MOSFETs are cooled down, as well as the GPU as well using a copper base plate. So it does look like they're taking it seriously to cooling down everything. And it does seem like a pretty well-designed cooler, like I said. It shouldn't have any trouble cooling an RX 5600 XT, which runs really cool by default anyways from using not that much power. Let's take a look at the power color card here. As you can see, it does have a simple stealthy design as well. It's mostly black, which the fans are also pretty large, which means that it necessitates them to increase the height, which is slightly above the PCIe bracket length, which is a bit more than the Sapphire card too. And for the backplate design, it's much simpler than the Sapphire card, which this one just has the Red Dragon logo on the side, as well as the brushed aluminum finish on the backplate. There isn't much of anything going on, unlike the Sapphire card, which has all kinds of cutouts. One advantage this card does have is it does have a dual BIOS switch. So if you want to flash some BIOS or, you know, switch to the silent profile, this card does have it. And this card also has a single 8-pin power input. Like I said, all RX 5600 XCs have that. And it does have an empty 8-pin spot, so I think that this PCB does belong originally to the Red Devil version, which is a higher-end card. 
And for the display outputs, you can see that they use triple display ports and one HDMI compared to what Sapphire did with two HDMIs instead. And again, the vent on the power color card doesn't really do anything because the heatsink design is different in that it uses a vertically oriented fins which exhausts most of the hot air towards the top as well as the bottom towards the motherboard. So all of the hot air doesn't really go to the front and back. And the heatsink shroud is really open which showcases the heatsink beneath it which is a really large heatsink. It's a slightly larger heatsink than Sapphire and it also has um, one more heat pipe at five heat pipes as well as it cooling everything as well on the VRM as well as the VRAM with a base plate. And it does also have a copper base plate for the GPU so it should spread the heat and cool the GPU pretty well just like the Sapphire card. Again this seems like a pretty well engineered heatsink design with both of the large fans as well which are again about 92 millimeter fans covering all of the heatsink's surface area so it should cool pretty well and should do it pretty quietly too because of the larger heatsink size. And for the fan shroud again, it's just all black, there isn't anything too fancy except for the chrome accents around the fan blades, which is a bit tacky maybe if you don't like it, but yeah, the plastic is still pretty solid, both of these cards feel really solid in your hand, so I don't think these feel cheap just because they use a plastic shroud, they still feel pretty high quality. And the only thing that I don't really like from the power color card is that they use the power color branding on the side, which just seems a bit too much when the whole card is really stealth, so I would have preferred they didn't put any branding on the side at all. And otherwise, this card is a pretty simple looking card as well, like the Sapphire card. Mostly all black, and there is no LEDs anywhere. It's all just, you know, no LEDs at all, no RGB. So if you're looking for that, don't get either of these cards. These are pretty cut down, low budget, no RGB cards that just are made to perform. And in terms of performance, I'm not really gonna take a look at their performance in games or anything like that. I'm just gonna take a look at their cooler performances. So anyways, these are the two cards side by side first. You can see that the power color card is a bit bigger than the sapphire card, although not my bunch. It's a bit taller as well as a bit longer. Well, both of those cards use the same size fans and they also use the same plastic shroud for the heatsink cover. So there's not really either one that's a bit higher quality or lower quality. They use the same material, which is, you know, metal or, or aluminium on the backplate as well as a plastic shroud. Although the backplate is a lot more complicated on Sapphire's card with a lot of cutouts such as this venting that allows the heatsink to blow through the backplate as well as a lot of artistic designs while the power color card really doesn't have anything on the backplate. Just a brushed metal finish and their logo and there's no venting or cutouts. And again, putting them one on top of each other, you can see that the Sapphire card is slightly smaller than the Power Color card. So if you're buying the Power Color card, be mindful of that. There might be some cases this doesn't fit in just because it's taller and longer. So yeah, that's pretty much the only difference. Now to the testing that I'm doing, I'm just really going to test the temperatures when they're under load as well as their fan noise and as well as their clock speeds, which I'll show you in GPU-Z because these 5600 XTs are really locked down, so any factory overclocks are not significant. As well as their manual overclocking as well, that's pretty locked down. AMD basically puts a hard limit on these cards to prevent you from going too fast because I think they might cannibalize the RX 5700 XT cards if they allow you to overclock too much. But either ways, the performance are pretty similar, so we're just looking at the cooling performance as well as the fan noise mostly, so I'm not really using any high-end test bench. It's just an old H97 motherboard with a G3258 overclock to 4.5 GHz just so that it doesn't bottleneck it in something like Unigen Valley which I'm going to be using for both cards. And here you can see at the stock settings, the clock speeds are pretty much identical even though they have slightly different temperatures as you can see. The power color card is actually about 10 degrees hotter than the sapphire card. And even for the memory temperatures, you can see that the Sapphire card is a lot cooler at about 8 degrees cooler at the maximum, as well as the VRM as well. It's basically all about 8 to 10 degrees cooler on the Sapphire card. But if you look closely, you can see that the Sapphire card has a much higher fan speed at about 1500 RPM or more, while the Power Color card stays at about 1000 or 1100 RPM, maybe closer to 1200 RPM. So it is a bit quieter, but it does run quite a bit hotter as well. And it's kind of similar in terms of power consumption as well. So 
It's not really because one card draws more power, it's mostly because of the fan speeds that they're running at, in which the Sapphire card runs a lot faster fans, which is why it runs a bit cooler. Now for the overclocking, I'm just gonna use MSI Afterburner, and with this card, what you have to do is basically max out the power limit and just max out the core clock, which is at 1820, that's the maximum you can set, as well as the memory clock at 1860, which is the maximum you can set, then just hit apply. And that works on both cards because it's a limited overclock and you really won't have any problems hitting that on any card at all, really. And as you can see, it doesn't really change anything. The power consumption stays pretty much the same, maybe just slightly higher. And the clock speeds are just a bit higher as well, from 1730 to about 1780 MHz, as well as the memory clock obviously at 1860 MHz. And the temperatures also basically stay the same <laughs> in both overclocked and stock form because it's not really drawing more power. And because of that, the fan speeds also stay pretty much the same from what I can see. So there really isn't any meaningful difference in terms of temperature or acoustics when you overclock it or not. So I don't see why anyone wouldn't overclock their RX 5600 XT because it's really locked down that it's not going to change the temperature or fan noise or power consumption that much and you get a bit of free performance that's pretty much guaranteed. So you might be able to hear a bit more coil whine on the power color card that I have but the fan noise is definitely quieter on the power color card compared to the sapphire card. So both cards again have the fan stop feature so it'll not turn on unless you're gaming and when you stop gaming it'll completely stop the fans. So from the noise comparison you can see that the power color card has a slightly noisier coil wind compared to the sapphire card but the power color card is also slightly quieter in terms of the fan noise. It's really not a big difference while the sapphire card has a slightly more whooshy air noise because of the higher fan speeds it's not that big of a deal and the sapphire card is already pretty quiet but you can definitely hear a difference where the power color card is slightly quieter in terms of fan noise but i'm quite perplexed why the temperature difference is quite that big maybe the sapphire card fans are just a bit better designed as well because the rpm difference is not really that big that i would have expected a 10 degree difference to the component temperatures to both of the cards so i would say that the sapphire card has a better design cooler and fans so if you're looking for cooler temperatures and, you know, better uh, performance, I guess, even though the performance is going to be pretty much the same, I would say take the Sapphire card. But if you want a quieter card, then I would say probably take the Power Color card. And I didn't test the Silent Mode button because it's already really quiet at the OC Mode BIOS. And if you set it to Silent Mode, then the temperatures are just going to get hotter. And it's already pretty warm with the power color card so I don't see why would you want to use the silent mode but anyways that's it for the review I would say that the sapphire card is the better card of the review because it's just a lot cooler while not being that much noisier that it's noticeable anyways but the power color card is slightly quieter but yeah that's it for this video if you found it useful and you like this video maybe click the like button and maybe comment down below which card you intend on buying or which card you have and what's your experience with it and also maybe click subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this or or more interesting informational videos that I post as well. Thank you for watching.